Hello and welcome everyone. I'm going to move to a demo. Uh, Jerry is going to be demoing for us today kind of that configuration and use. And as he shares um, his screen, he's going to go through kind of that comparison of the enterprise UI with the content UI, how to, how to configure enterprise libraries, what's kind of available, as well as discuss some use cases for you. All right, perfect. Thanks, Jason. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. I've transitioned from the deck and you'll be seeing uh, my browser page. So we're going to start off with the native UI. So I'm going to use some terms that hopefully are familiar with everybody else. So the native legacy UI is the UI you're looking at now. We're also going to see what was commonly called the ADF UI, but it's now called the Web Center Content uh, UI. And we'll, I'll start out there and we'll show you some of the deltas as we get there and we'll jump into a little bit on the content desktop and this up integration suite piece. When you're working with folders and, and enterprise libraries, basic underpinnings of that are you're using the framework folders or previously known as folders G. As a part of that out of the box configuration for Web Center, you get a starting point root library of enterprise libraries. So enterprise libraries are defined as this robust way to secure and manage and share content throughout the organization. So many people use Web Center for departmental scenarios. If you want to consider kind of a, I'm going to put a thought in your head here about considering a mini intranet, documents you might want to share from different areas of the organization that people need access to that are templates or they need to download and to fill them out and they maybe need to submit them into your organization without having to build a site, without having to build any custom development. I'm just going to use uh, the basic enterprise library concept. So in this case, I've created three enterprise libraries, a general knowledge base, a human resources one, and an information technology one, usually places where people might want to go to look up stuff that is enterprise-wide. Different people can access and manage these, so the standard content service security model applies to all content, whether they're in folders or not in folders. So your security model is intact in that scenario. From a navigation perspective, when you're in enterprise libraries, you have the full, depending on your access level, I'm in here as an admin, you're going to see many things across the top, but you'll see um, options for viewing and searching within the library. So it's just another way of searching. One thing that's kind of cool I like to call out is when you're looking at the folder pane up here and you have content that might be within that root file, you will see either all published items or all items. And the difference is you're seeing stuff that might be in workflow that's associated with one of those folders, libraries, or subfolders. So it's kind of cool to see that, provided you have security access to see them. Another mechanism is uh, being able to search. You can search in folders and folder metadata or search for files. So there is an action uh, option across the, for each one of these enterprise libraries that give you access to update the folder information. Now there's ways of setting up folder metadata and folder default information in terms of security or access lists. And there's also ways of subscribing. So I've subscribed to each one of these. So every time something changes within one of those libraries, I will get a notification. For example, if I'm um, part of a knowledge base or a subset folder of knowledge base information for say a region of my business, whether it's America's Asia PAC or EMEA, I can subscribe to that. And every time something changes, I will get a notification. So that helps me stay informed through a normal email without anybody having to publish something to me. The navigation also lets you take, kind of run back this way to get back to the root if you don't want to go back to the browse drop-down option. There's also the standard set of options as you move stuff around and you might want to provide you have the privileges to move stuff around is rename them, move them from one folder to another, create a shortcut, or even add it to my folders. One thing many people forget is there's a My Content Server portion of this, that if you are using the legacy UI, that I can add the general knowledge base to my shortcuts and navigate to my folders and see that I now have access to the general knowledge base. So if I want to hit my folder to start off with, and that's why I'm logging, after I log in, that's where I start off with, I can jump right over the general knowledge base and drill in to folders that have content or subfolders that might have more content that I might need to be working with. So that's a nice little feature that some people tend to forget. So as I'm working with um, some of my enterprise libraries, I might want to perform some functions around those. But if I am selecting stuff and drilling down, 
I can also do things within that folder. So now that I'm down into one of my enterprise libraries, I still have access to view all published items or all items. I can now add new folders, new query folder, retention folders, or new content items or existing content items and bring them into the folder. Under the covers, basically folders are just another metadata tagging option that happens as a part of the user experience. And I can continue my search. So when I do, I can add new folders and I can create some subfolders within this structure. But once I'm into one of these, I can also perform additional functions on the folders. And this is where the whole framework folders concept comes into play and the features in terms of the folder information, the metadata values, any default metadata values, which I, am, in my case, I've defaulted certain profiles to that experience so that when I work with content, adding it, updating it, I will work with it in that profile. And I can define this folder metadata default so that when my content gets added, I will automatically be asked based on that profile configuration. So this is what you're used to if you come over here and do a new check-in, because it's happening as part of my, my first level of categorization, which is the folder I'm selecting to put this into. So now I'm putting structure around my content, which is ECM 101. So um, propagating, uh, just a quick note about that. I can say take and propagate any information I might have changed at that folder level and push it down to subfolders and or documents that might be in that folder to help update the metadata. Um, we do that with some tool, um, one of our tools called Subscription Notifier, but you can also use it if you're using a folder structure to update metadata for everything below where you're making that propagation initiated. Um, so that's kind of the, the quick navigation for some of these. One thing you need to be aware of when you're working with the folders in the enterprise libraries is you're viewing it not just in the web viewable form, which is what you get out of the box when you do a search in the search results. The content ID will give you the web viewable. The file name is the file name you uploaded, the actual name of that document you checked in. And the title, in many cases, if you don't supply a title when you do an ad, it'll default to the file name. And then the action buttons are available to you at that point in time. So everything's still the same in terms of working with it from the um, normal out-of-the-box content info page and check-in profiles. So one of the scenarios that is kind of useful is from a um, getting benefits in form. So if I'm getting a benefits template from my, say, my HR library and my benefits information, I might want to upload that and give it somebody access and download a filter form to submit them. So one of the integration points that Jason mentioned earlier was the Office Online Server Connector. So when you see this option, you see one of those Microsoft icons, you can actually click on that and provided, based on your security level, you can either change that, update that, or just view it and, and edit it in a browser. So you don't have to check that out, like to check out and open. There's also features that would be set up for a different time that we can talk about later is you can set up templates with the Office Online Server and treat that as your template to drive that experience so somebody can fill out the form like a fillable PDF scenario, fill up the document, and check that in. So once I might download one of those forms, I might go and submit that form. So in this case, um, the use case would be I've, I've downloaded my template and I want to upload it so I can trigger the form to be actioned by somebody in the, on the, in the organization. So I would basically do a new content item, check that item in, I pre-populated some comments and the draft progress, and I'm not going to do it, um, any default workflow on this, but I will pick up WebLogic, who I'm, who I'm logged in as, and I'll choose the file I want to upload with. And so I'm going to pick that uh, for Dave Smith, and I'm just going to check that in. I'm not going to put the title up there. Oh, excuse me. I will put the title up in this case. And I'll check that item in with the workflow. I'll pick a review date because I just want, happen to want to review this, say, a couple weeks from now or whatever. And then I get my normal confirmation page. When that item is checked in, because of the profile that's been assigned, I don't see the upload that I just did. It will go through its normal conversion process. And in this case, I am viewing all items as my default. So I'm seeing it even though it is in workflow. I just look for published items that will not show up. So I can kind of treat it like a queuing mechanism in combination with other features in Web Center. So um, in order to give you some contrast in terms of working with enterprise libraries, I'm going to go into 
what's called the Web Center content and log in, log in with the same user, except that now I'm using this fancier UI. And I defaulted this UI to hit the enterprise libraries. So I can change my profile uh, definition to default to that, or I can do a normal search. So I can do searches, um, browses, browse through the libraries, and I can browse through two different options in, for my libraries. These are the libraries that are system or the enterprise libraries that are defined by me, or I can just look at the root folders. Because I might be using uh, framework folders to manage my content as well, and enterprise libraries shows up as one of those. And you get the navigation off the left, so you can jump in rather quickly to see what's going on. And here's the formula I checked in. And your experience is more like kind of a mini intranet, where it's got a fancier UI, got some different exposed features as a result of making that work. And you can kind of do some different things, because here's the workflow item for that Dave Smith that I need to work, since it's for me to work. And then I can also pin different views to move around to different folders. So I can pin a link, or I can go to my favorites. I've favorited where I've submit my forms through this process of this experience. When I do this, I can also um, upload with my normal profile that are defined for me that I have access to in this content server. In this case, I'm going to use my demo profile. And I'm just going to drag and drop um, some file off of this list. I'm going to move it off a little bit here. But I will take another one for Gene Doe and drop that over here. So I can do a drag and drop and I can set my metadata. One of the differences of this experience is I don't have to fill in the title because this experience says because I'm doing it this way, I'm going to um, default the title name to the file name that I uploaded. And I can pick a review date. And if you have any processes that give you some periodic reviews, you can make that happen. So that will submit that. Now we'll actually check the workflow and go through the conversion process as well. The thumbnail won't be shown until it gets through the conversion process and you refresh the page to make that happen. So you can see the latest and greatest version that came in there. So that's a way to kind of work through this process and actually look at different types of libraries. Navigation is a little bit different. Um, so I can drill into some of those and see what's going on in other portions of my enterprise folders. You can change those views as well. See the thumbnail view, see the tab of the view, and it keeps that information for me as I navigate through the site. So I'm going to jump back to, but as I'm working through um, some of my experiences, there's many things I can do to kind of expose how this experience works through the out-of-the-box content server features. When you're viewing assets through this model as well, you're actually looking at the file name that was, that was uploaded. And when you're viewing documents in this viewer, you're seeing it with the new review pane. And I will see multiple revisions across the top if there are multiple revisions, but I will see a, a preview pane off the left of the document and page two, and I can start annotating as part of that process. And I can work with the native, the web viewable, see the metadata, update the metadata, try to have the right um, security and see the security that's applied to it. And more features allow you to do the usual stuff you're used to working with than the native, with the native legacy UI. So just a kind of a quick snapshot of how that UI works. Um, one of the things I do want to show also is the um, desktop integration, also known as Content Desktop. And I have several content servers attached to my desktop integration suite UI. The one I was using was called Show Me, and when I do browse content, I will have that same experience of the folder view, except I'm using it in something I'm going to be more familiar with than my network as my network file shares. Enterprise libraries it still has the same enterprise libraries, and I still see stuff that is um, formatted and organized in that content. And I can use the different views that the Explorer allows me to work with. Now you'll notice that when I look at the submit folders, I'm not seeing anything that's been released. So this experience is going to be a little bit different than the experience that you're seeing with the UIs that we went through. But documents will be available to me, and when I'm working with documents in this fashion, I also have capability to look at them, edit them, and so forth. And it does the download, and it'll open them in native and allow me to put those back in. In this experience, the Office Online connector does not um, play a role. It's more from a time 
perspective of the UI and allows me to kind of work with the same features in a similar fashion that I'm used to prior to working, putting in the content server. If I wanted to update metadata, the profile that happens to be assigned to this type of folder, and this type of document will be used to pop up the option for me to update any metadata related to this document. So different ways of just kind of getting at that access, but I think that this mini intranet concept is one that's under underutilized for customers who don't have full intranets or have link farms, but they do want to share documents in an easy, non-developmental situation. So it gets it out there quick and clean and follows the normal content service security and configuration practices that you already have in your environment. All right, Jace. Thanks, Jerry, that was great. Thanks, Jason, thanks for attending, everybody. And we will talk to you more down the road. Thanks, everyone.